start another Jimmy Makes Science Simple short, and I have a great study to share with you here today. Literally just came off the presses April 7th, 2021, published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardi Cardiology. That is a journal of the European Society of Cardiology. And what they found was nearly 30% of patients with coronary artery disease have diabetes. So this was a large study published on the World Health Day. And I have a copy of the study in my hands. I will read to you here. Thanks so much for being here today. This is the shortened version of my long form show uh, when I only have an abstract or minimal parts of the study rather than the whole study, we do these Jimmy Makes Science Simple shorts just so you get a, a, a gist of what the study is about and then you can go learn more if you get a copy of the full study. So the title of the study, Prevalence of Diabetes and Impact on Cardiovascular Events and Mortality in Patients with Chronic Coronary Syndromes across multiple geographical regions and ethnicities. So the background, in contrast with the setting of acute myocardial infarction, there are limited data regarding the impact of diabetes on clinical outcomes in contemporary cohorts of patients with chronic coronary syndromes. We aimed to investigate the prevalence and prognostic impact of diabetes according to ge geographical regions and ethnicity. Now, this is interesting because I've told you guys before, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, can some cancers, across the spectrum, all of these are basically the same disease. Let's stop pretending like we have heart disease, diabetes, obesity, all these things. What we have is insulin resistance. And when you have insulin resistance, it can manifest as coronary artery disease. It can manifest as type two diabetes. It can manifest as obesity, Alzheimer's, cancer. So it's striking that they would even think they would need to do a study like this when we know there is a correlation and we know from previous research that those people who have diabetes have a much higher risk of coronary artery disease and vice versa. Those with coronary artery disease have a very high risk of type two diabetes. Why have they not made two and two make four before now? Well, they have now. So the methods and results that they used, uh, they used this study group called Clarify. Uh, it's a registry of 32,694 patients, all with chronic coronary syndromes over 45 different countries, which includes all the major countries of the world. Patients were enrolled 2009 to 2010 and then followed up yearly over the next five years. And so that was the criteria for inclusion in this study. Chronic coronary syndromes were defined by uh, less than 1% of the following criteria, prior, prior myocardial infarction, evidence of coronary stenosis of greater than 50%, um, proven symptomatic myocardial isochemia, and prior revascularization procedure. All that to say, they kind of uh, wanted to make sure they did have one of those definitions that clearly identified that they already had heart disease. So what were they looking at here? Amongst the 32,694 patients, 9,502 of them, which was 29% of that patient population, had diabetes with a regional prevalence ranging from below 20% in Northern Europe to greater than 60% in the Gulf countries. In a multivariable uh, adjusted Cox proportional hazards model, diabetes was associated with an increased risk for the primary outcome, which was cardiovascular health, myocardial uh, infarction, or a stroke. So uh, myocardial infarction, by the way, is another fancy schmancy word for heart attack. With an adjusted hazard ratio of 1.28, and for all secondary outcomes, which included all cause and cardiovascular mortality, meaning they died of anything and most specifically from cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, which is the heart attack, stroke, heart failure, and coronary revascularization. Differences on the outcomes according to geography and ethnicity were only modest. So their conclusion in the study 
In patients with chronic coronary syndromes, diabetes is independently associated with mortality and cardiovascular events, including heart failure, which is not accounted for by demographics, prior medical history, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction, or the use of a secondary prevention medication. This is observed across multiple geographic regions and ethnicities, despite the disparities in the prevalence of diabetes. Isn't that interesting? Because usually they say, well, it's obvious in America they eat all that junk food, and so therefore that's contributing. And they're saying, no, 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 we've looked all over the world, and anytime somebody had presence of heart disease, they had that propensity three times more likely to have diabetes than those in the general population, which again, it makes sense. They're all on the spectrum of insulin resistance. So that's the study, again, April 7th, 2021, uh, issue of the journal, European Journal of Preventative Card Cardiology. I've got a press release about it that I'll look to see if there's any other thing in there of interest. Uh, study author, Emmanuel Vital Pediat uh, from France, said obesity and a lack of exercise are common risk factors for both diabetes and heart disease and our results highlight the urgent need for improving nutrition and raising activity levels globally. Well, they always say that. We need to improve the nutrition, but then they go and put them on a low-fat diet that doesn't improve their nutrition. I wish they would get pointed about what improving nutrition means because without that context, it means nothing. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So what happened uh, in the study over that five-year period that they were observing them, uh, those with diabetes had a 38% higher rate of death during the five-year follow-up. Remember, these are heart patients, and the ones that were heart patients that also had type 2 diabetes, 38% higher death rate in that five-year follow-up. They also had a 28% higher risk of the combined outcome of heart attack, stroke, or death from the cardiovascular disease. Heart patients with diabetes had worse outcomes than those without diabetes, regardless of where they were in the world. So uh, the researcher again said diabetes was linked with worse outcomes, even in areas with the lowest prevalence. In Europe, for example, diabetes was linked with a 29% greater risk of that combined death rate. This indicates that the management of these very high risk patients with heart disease and diabetes should be improved. Not just manage, heal the insulin resistance. Why is this hard? Why do they do these studies and then come to the conclusion, well, I guess we should clean up their diet and exercise. Yeah, no kidding, but that doesn't help them unless you give them guidance on what that means. Each country needs to identify who these patients are that have both heart disease and diabetes and then provide tailored educational and prevention programs. Well, that's what we desperately need. Insurance companies need to pay for such and they need to open it up to functional medicine doctors and nutritionists and all kinds of people that can give them good information about how to actually heal this rather than spinning their wheels at their doctor's office because the doctor doesn't know anything about nutrition. She concluded that the importance of healthy eating and living cannot be overemphasized. Again, no kidding. But who gets to decide what healthy is? That's the problem. Everyone can lower their chances of developing diabetes if they simply lost weight and exercise. Oh yeah, oh yeah, is, is it that easy? Is that is that all it takes? Just lose some weight and exercise, you fatty, diabetic-y, heart disease-y person? so sick of the judgmentalness that comes out of some of these research papers. Early detection is so needed uh, or is needed so that blood sugar can be controlled. No, people can go down to Walgreens, Walmart, CVS and go buy a glucometer right now. Why don't we make better access, more affordability for like a CGM to go in the back of their arm? That's how you're going to tackle this. Not saying we need to have an early detection. Yeah, it's called a glucometer. Go make them available. Those with heart disease and diabetes also need an active lifestyle and a good diet to protect their health. Again, active lifestyle. Is that just walking? Or do they need to do some HIIT training? Do they need to do some more uh, glycolytically demanding workouts to maintain muscle mass, which can help with some of these things? 
And then a good diet, again, who gets to decide what a good diet is? Because we know, based on all the propaganda they've thrown at us over the years, that their definition of a good diet, quote unquote, is a low fat, high grain type of diet. They will give no credence to a low carbohydrate, ketogenic, uh, paleo, whole 30, real food based kind of diet, carnivore uh, types of diets. They just don't give credence to it. And if they started giving credence to it, then maybe we could do something about this heart disease and diabetes issue. Avoiding smoking is crucial, of course, as is controlling your blood pressure and your cholesterol. Well, blood pressure, yes. Cholesterol, not so much. I would say triglycerides, get those under control. And But when they say cholesterol, they're referring to LDL and total cholesterol. So once again, you guys, it was a study published in the April 7th, 2021 issue of the journal European Journal of Preventative Cardiology. Go look it up. Prevalence of diabetes and impact on cardiovascular events and mortality in patients with chronic coronary syndromes across multiple geographical regions and ethnicities. Go check it out. Thanks so much for watching here today on Jimmy Make Science Simple Short. And we'll be back again real soon. Bye, guys.